Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. Uh, I wanted to offer you guys uh, a quick uh, service, I guess you would call it, uh, just this week, um, and uh, then I'll go back to the madness for myself uh, next week. But uh, what I want to do is, if you want to send me uh, your letter of intent, uh, I'll look at it and tell you what the three things that you can do uh, to make it better are. So I'm not editing it for free. That that takes quite a bit of time. Uh, but what I can do is I can kind of give you some pointers and say, hey, you know, this, this, and this. If you focus on these three things, uh, that would make it exponentially better. Because what I'm finding is that I'm getting people coming to me after they've been revised by other people. And something in some, their gut is just telling them that, you know, I... <sighs> I'm just not sure that this is the top 15 or 20 percent it needs to be uh, for me to get to the top of the pile. And, and that's what you need. You need to be in the, the top 15 or 20 percent. Uh, so this is a little bit of a concern for me because let me give you a good analogy. Uh, we went to Kansas City for a soccer tournament. And in Kansas City, they are absolutely really good at tiering. And I mean T-I-E-R-I-N-G, not crying. And the way that it works is tier one are the toughest teams, then tier two are the next toughest teams, and so forth. And as you kind of go through the years, the teams kind of work themselves into a place where you're really competitive. And uh, we had a team in tier two, and we had a team in tier five. And our team five tier, tier five team... Uh, had a win, a tie, and a loss. And that's really a show that you are properly tiered because, you know, you beat one of the teams, you tied one, and then, you know, you lost to one. So it wasn't that you were blowing out the teams or getting blown out yourself. You know, you were competitive. And if you did just a little bit better, then maybe you could go to the championship and win. And we actually did, and that was kind of cool. Uh, but the Tier 2 team uh, was missing a player, and it was a little bit of a struggle with the surface and things like that. And and maybe they weren't really in the in the tier. Maybe they could have been in you know a third tier. Uh, it's a little bit tougher when you're out of state and uh, you really don't know. Especially since uh, we mix up the teams all the time, like during the season, and then kind of make tournament teams for this that tournament. So this is my concern as it relates to pharmacy. So you might be at a school where your classmates are um, very, very uh, residency aggressive, I guess you could say, is is the term. And uh, those students are really pushing and you're getting pushed and and everybody's kind of rising to a, a certain level. And you when you're in the kind of the middle of that group, you may feel like you're a mid to lower tier person, but because you're in a top tier program as it relates to residency matching, uh, you are in very good shape. But the opposite is true at a school that maybe uh, doesn't have such a great match rate and you feel like you're near the middle or top. And unfortunately, you're the middle or top of a lower tier. And what that means is when all of these get mixed, all 145 schools come together, and and it doesn't work like that. You don't have 145 schools going to a single uh, site, but uh, it's more regional. But when you do have something like that happen, you're going to have different tiers come in. And so all of a sudden, a tier 5 team is playing a tier 1 team, and a tier 3 team is playing a tier 9 team. And so you're going to have some applications just blown out of the water. And the thing is, is that if you had known that that's going to be the level of competition, kind of internalize that, and somebody could look at it and say, well, I can tell you where your LOI is. This is a tier one LOI, a tier two LOI, and so forth. And kind of give you that feedback like, okay, well, you need to go back to whomever you work with to, to get your stuff edited and say, hey, you know, I appreciate this and, and maybe this would get me a good grade at my college, but what I need is to rise above the rest. And 
right now where this document is, it's not top 20. And if it's not top 20, and especially if you're applying to Academic Medical Center, you know, you're talking about the, you know, Cedar sinai the Mayos, the, you know, see the cancer centers, um, UNC's, Kentucky's, those kind of places where it's just a lot of applications. And you can't come in with anything less than something that is really, really top of the line uh, and really conveys what it is that makes you a good match for their program. So do email me, TonyThePharmacist at gmail.com. Uh, you can just send it to me, and I'll send you a couple sentences saying, hey, you know, if you did this, this, and this, I think you'd do a great job. But uh, what I really am hoping to see is that, hey, you know, I had uh, one of the reviewers over ACCP look at this, and I wanted to see if you could take a, a quick look at it as well, maybe uh, give me something to take back to them, or you know maybe you had a, a parent or a friend who happens to be an English major or just is kind of into that stuff, or maybe the Career Services Center uh, who tried to help you. It's a really, really specific thing that, that we're working on here. So I want to make sure that you know where you are so that when you are applying and in you know, the, the most horrible feeling, and I feel truly, it really pulls at my heartstrings in, in February when I see this, but at the end of February where people are like, I, I keep hearing my friends are getting interviews and I, I have nothing. And to find and see that if they had just known that their documents were not where they needed to be, that they could have made that change in December where we are now. And, and that's what I want to get to. So... I just want to kind of make you aware uh, that and kind of give you my perspective as someone who's seeing hundreds of uh, letters of intent in a season, uh, and we're getting kind of close to a thousand uh, over the years uh, that I will have seen, and it's very easy for me to tell you, you know, you're like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm applying to um, you know, Cedar sinai with this uh, letter. Do you think it's, you know, up to par or where it should be? Or I'm applying to the Mayo with this uh, letter or uh, whatever hospital it is. And, and I can give you a pretty good idea of those type of kind of where you are and where you stand and where you need to be. And um, I'd like to do that uh, during this uh, mid-year week. And then, uh, you know, uh, after uh, I'll get back to kind of uh, editing and, and doing those things that I do. Uh, so Tony, the pharmacist at gmail.com and hope I can help.